Welcome to Electron Line. Here's one of the most interesting parts of quantum mechanics. It's called the zero point vibration. The assumption is, from a classical point of view, from classical mechanics, that if the temperature goes to absolute zero, there's absolutely no vibrational motion whatsoever. However, we find that's not the case in the quantum world, and that's what we call the zero point vibration. What is the lowest possible energy level a simple harmonic oscillator or a quantum harmonic oscillator can have? So, by, we've already seen that the lowest energy can be expressed to be E sub zero, and that that energy is equal to one half h bar times omega, where h bar is h divided by two pi, and h, of course, is Planck's constant. So where did that come from? How do we know that there is some motion still possible even though the temperature could be at absolute zero? That should not be the case. But the key is understanding the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. So let's start with that concept. But first, again, let's go back to the general equation of, a, of an oscillator. It is equal, the energy is equal to the energy contained within the motion, the kinetic energy, plus the energy contained within the spring or the spring constant, which is one half kx squared, the potential energy. Now, if we go back and say that p, the momentum, is equal to mv, so that p squared is equal to m squared v squared, or p squared divided by m is equal to m times v squared, we can actually replace the mv squared by p squared over m. And so instead of writing one half mv squared, we can write the kinetic energy portion of the energy of an oscillator as p squared divided by 2m. Also, instead of writing one half kx squared, we realize that omega is equal to k divided by m, and therefore omega squared is k divided by m, and k is equal to m times omega squared. If we replace the spring constant here by m times omega squared, now we have the kinetic energy written as p squared over 2m, and the potential energy as 1 half m omega squared x squared. Now we go back to the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. It states that the uncertainty in the position times the uncertainty in the momentum is equal to h bar divided by 2. And if we then solve this equation for the uncertainty in the momentum, which is then h bar divided by 2 times the uncertainty in the position, and if we square both sides, we get this. Now, why did we do that? Because if we go to our minimum energy and write it in terms of the equation for energy as in terms of momentum and position, but if we then say that the minimum energy an oscillator can have is the energy contained within the oscillator based on the uncertainty principle. In other words, the uncertainty of the position and the momentum. So the smallest energy that the oscillator can have depends upon the uncertainty in the momentum and the uncertainty in the position. And so we replace P by the uncertainty in P and X by the uncertainty in X. So we know nothing more about the oscillator than the minimum dependent upon, uh, that's dependent on the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. So the minimum energy it can have depends upon what we don't know about the momentum and what we don't know about the position. Now, if we replace the uncertainty in the momentum squared by what that's equal to in terms of the uncertainty in the position, we now have the minimum energy in terms of only the uncertainty in the position. If we now take the derivative of that and set it equal to zero, we then obtain the minimum energy that the oscillator can have, because we said equal to zero, and we want to know for what value of x that occurs, and then we plug that back into our equation. So we take the derivative of the minimum energy the oscillator can have, and here's the derivative right here, we set it equal to zero, and then we solve that for x, and it turns out when the uncertainty, or not, we don't solve it for the x, we solve it for the uncertainty in x, and when the uncertainty in x is equal to the square root of h bar divided by 2m times the, the angular uh, frequency, then we can take that and plug that back into our equation right here for the minimum energy. When we do that, we get this equation right here. Amazingly enough, it simplifies to h bar omega over 4 plus h bar omega over 4. We add that together, and therefore we realize that the minimum energy an oscillator can have because of the Heisenberg uncertainty principle is equal to h bar omega divided by 2, which happens to be 
the first energy level of the zero energy state. This is the lowest energy uh, a quantum harmonic oscillator can have because the uncertainty, the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. If we knew the actual precision of position momentum at all times for a simple harmonic oscillator at the quantum level, then of course this would go to zero. But since we don't know the exact position and we don't know the exact momentum, there's this uncertainty there, we cannot predict it and therefore the minimum energy at the quantum level an oscillator can have is defined by this equation right here and it's not equal to zero. And that's one of the fundamental principles of quantum mechanics. The uncertainty does very strange things to us. It allows particles to be where they shouldn't be, like inside barriers. We can have energy that is not equal to zero at absolute zero and so forth. So this is simply one of the results of the uncertainty principle and that's what drives the concept of quantum mechanics. Here's a very good example of it.